Thanks again to Thomas for his words of wisdom. It was lovely. Much nicer than our pairing is going to be. So, seeing as how these ALLs are big business, I'm gonna have to pair one with a really big movie. So, if we're doing it, might as well fucking do it right. Today we're pairing Bud Light with James Cameron's Avatar from 2009. That's the best-selling beer in the U.S., paired with the highest-grossing movie of all time. Yeesh. Actually, before we get into it, I just want to point out that if you adjust for inflation, the highest-grossing movie of all time is still Gone with the Wind, from way back in 1939. So, suck it, Cameron. Also, the best-selling beer in the world, not just America, but in the world, is a Chinese beer called Snow, and it's only sold in China. So I guess, suck it. Eberhard Anheuser and Adolphus Busch. And, okay, technically the only reason snow is considered the best-selling beer is because there's a whole line of snow beers that are all counted as one. Whereas we count Bud Heavy, Bud Light, and so on as their own separate things. If those were all combined like snow beers are, they would easily outsell snow. So, suck it, China. Not that any of this amounts to anything more than bullshit capitalist dick wagging, but I want you to have all the facts here, even if those facts are very, very stupid. And speaking of stupid, Avatar. Actually, this movie was not nearly as, as stupid as I feared it would be, uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we get into it, I have another confession to make. Last time I confessed that I have never tried the Kalmbacher Icebox. That was embarrassing. This one's not as bad as that, but I'm gonna have to make Confession Corner a regular segment on beer barrels and blockbusters at this rate. So here goes. Before I decided that this was going to be my beer and movie pairing, I had never seen Avatar. How is this possible, you may be asking. This movie made $2.788 billion. How is someone who purports to be a movie nerd never seen it? See, what had happened was, I was very excited for this movie, like uh, a year or so before it came out. I just thought the concept sounded cool. I love sci-fi movies and James Cameron has made some of the most iconic sci-fi movies out there, and he was going all in on this new camera technology to make the special effects as impressive as possible, and then Sigourney Weaver was going to be in it. Everything about it seemed very cool. But as the movie's release date grew closer, that Hollywood hype machine started chugging along like it does, and as the ad blitz for Avatar grew from a steady buzz to like a manic fever pitch, I found myself not caring so much about it anymore. I got so tired of hearing about these big blue fucks that by the time the movie came out, I was exhausted. I didn't want to hear about it anymore. And then it blew up for real. It became the biggest movie ever. It was the number one movie at the American box office for seven consecutive weeks. It was absolutely ubiquitous with tie-ins from Coca-Cola and McDonald's, making sure everyone knew this was the movie event of the summer, not to be missed. And this was a big summer for blockbusters. There was a Harry Potter movie out a Twilight movie, a Transformers movie, a Fast and Furious movie, and a Star Wars movie that summer. The Hangover came out in 2009, as did Pixar's Up. Those are some heavy fucking hitters. This is the era of peak blockbuster. Marvel was just getting started, with Iron Man coming out in 2008. And no matter how shitty these big movies were, they just raked in money. Alvin and the Chipmunks The Squeakwolf made over $443 million worldwide in 2009. That is fucking disgusting. But Avatar reigned supreme over all those other blockbusters. It wasn't even close. This movie was an event unlike anything the world had ever seen. The story was epic, the, the world of Pandora was beautiful, the effects were stunning. It was also chock full of familiar cliches and story beats that made it easy to digest. It was like comfort food for movie fans. And they ate that shit up and went back for seconds. So, you know, as someone who likes it when movies have a little more nuance and a little less derivative bullshit, I opted out of watching Avatar. I enjoyed a ton of movies in 2009, and none of them were blockbusters. My favorite movie from 2009 is either Moon or the Fantastic Mr. Fox movie. Or Lars von Trier's Antichrist. <laughs> That's a fun movie featuring not one, but two scenes of graphic genital mutilation. You won't see that in an Alvin and the Chipmunks movie, no matter how hard you wish for it. But yeah, that's how I managed not to see Avatar for so long. I never felt the urge to go back and check it out, like I'll sometimes do with mainstream movies or TV shows. I never watched The Wire when it was on the air. No one did, really. That show had terrible ratings. 
But of course, once I got around to it, I realized what an amazing show it was. I did a similar thing with, with Gone Girl, and it ended up being great as well. Not that those are big mainstream things, but they are popular, well-known works. But you know what never enticed me to seek it out and see what all the fuss was about? Fucking Avatar. So I went ahead and finally watched it because I wanted to pair it with Bud Light. And like I said, it wasn't as dumb as I thought it would be. It's not a smart movie, you know, but it's okay. Uh, the dialogue is atrocious and the themes are heavy handed, but it's fun. It's a fun movie. It's bright and colorful and it moves at a decent clip for such a long movie. Plus it's got some great action sequences. Um, the CGI, even so many years after the fact, looks great. The characters are paper thin, but it's an action movie, you know? It's not the station agent. It's not the master. So, in the good column, it's a lot of fun. It's visually striking. It's got plenty of exciting action set pieces. It's got Viola Davis forerunner CCH Pounder in it. It has a pro-environmentalism message, which you don't see in many action movies. In the bad column, the dialogue may as well have been written by George Lucas. I get that Sam Worthington is supposed to be kind of bland, so he makes a good audience surrogate, but fuck me, he is as insipid as an ice-cold Bud Light. And the bad guys are so mustache twirlingly bad that I, I get distracted by my own eye rolls. And in the ugly column, this Hollywood cliche of the white savior is such a crock of shit. Like, these dumb natives could never mount an assault on their oppressors without the help of this bland-ass white guy. It takes him, like, three months to learn everything about their culture to the point that he's a better Navi than they are. It's the same type of shit that you see in, like, The Last Samurai, or The Help, or The Blind Side, or La La Land. Shit, even To Kill a Mockingbird uses this heinous trope. But this is also a, a super white movie in general. Uh, the vast majority of the non-white actors are playing the blue aliens. I only counted two POC actors with any lines who weren't playing Navi. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez and Dilip Rao. Not that this is rare in a Hollywood movie, but it is increasingly depressing. Maybe we'll get a less homogenous color palette in the sequels. Something besides blue and white. The politics of this movie are questionable too. The movie is all about having respect for nature and being diplomatic as opposed to militaristic. But they make the military shit look so cool. And the women in the movie, while, while shown to be as capable as the men, are still unnecessarily sexualized. These are not deal breakers, but it is annoying that you like this is still so prevalent in movies. And oddly, but not really surprisingly, um, these complaints are also common in the world of beer advertisements. Maybe not the white savior thing, but a lack of diversity is definitely a thing in beer ads. And questionable politics are practically a prerequisite for promoting beer. Ugh. My pop filter is really earning its keep with that sentence. Questionable politics are practically a prerequisite for promoting beer. Anyway, um, beer ads, especially those put out by Anheuser-Busch, are dripping with patriotism, like to an aggressive degree. They are on par with pickup truck commercials or Blake Sheldon songs. It's like an avatar where they talk about how peace is the answer before blowing shit up real cool. It's a, it's a special American brand of bullshit. Bud Light, uh, in addition to all their macho signaling, also brought us the disastrous Up For Whatever campaign in, tw in 2015. This is the one that had the unfortunate slogan, the perfect beer for removing no from your vocabulary for the night. Yikes. How did that make it onto bottles of beer? Did no one hear how rapey that sounds? The Up For Whatever campaign had been around for a while when this one popped up, but this slogan killed it indefinitely. It turns out people do have a limit for how tasteless they want their macro beers. Boom! Nailed it. That seems like a good note to end on. <laughs> like I said, there's not a lot to talk about with American Light Lagers. They're bland and popular. They pair well with popular movies like Avatar. If you're not that into beer, but you want to get ever so slightly drunk, NALL might be the one for you. If you are interested in something with a little more kick, a little more character, then you should join me next time on Beer Barrels and Blockbusters. I promise we'll be talking about a more exciting beer style. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know it will be British, and I know it will be more interesting than American Light Lagers are. Until then, if you want to rate and review and subscribe and follow and all that, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm at Beer Blockbuster on Twitter and Facebook. BeerBlockbuster at gmail.com. That's a thing. If there's a beer style you are interested in, or if there's a movie you want a beer pairing for, or if you just want to tell me how awesome I am, that's the best way to do it. It's really the only way to do so. 
I don't have like a beer barrels at Blockbusters PO box or anything. Not yet, anyway. If you want to mail me letter bombs or poison cookies or something, I'm sorry, but I don't have a way for you to do that. You'll just have to attack me verbally via the internet for now. But yeah, that's it for me now. Um, I'll be back soon with another episode of Beer Rails and Blockbusters. Until next time, good night, nerds. <laughs>